control the 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 essential um, 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 feature of a superfluid, which is the possibility of superfluid flow. So the vortices can destroy the superfluid flow, and they're the only excitations that will do it. Mm -hmm. So the vortices are, are therefore the vortices are control the essential physics of the of a, of a two-dimensional superfluid. That's okay. why the vortex and normalization group works. Okay, so, um, Mike, so if we go back to David's and then Grace's question, let's say you have a, a system, let's say uh, you create it in a very large wedge, so then you have um, mm -hmm. this, uh, lo you have one a low angle green boundary. Yeah. Okay? And then you start raising temperature. Yeah. Okay. So then the question is what would be the low energy excitation that would destroy uh, this lattice? Uh, probably the wandering about of the, of the the, 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 the green boundary, probably. I mean, certainly those would be low energy fluctuations. And uh, the obvious thing to do would be investigate the effects of those fluctuations. And that is presumably what they did. Yes, uh, clearly that's what they did. But the question yeah. here is this, right? So aside from the model, okay, Let's just think about it, the physics for, for a second. Just follow your own advice that we need to understand the physics first. Okay, so we have one uh, low angle green boundary and everybody else, everywhere else is a crystal, okay? So when we started raising temperature, clearly, uh, so this section can be here. Yeah, I mean, then the green boundary was uh, fluctuating. So that's my question. How? So let's say, is it possible to have a dislocation to come here and then the second one end up being here? Is it possible? If you do, then that means there has to be mm. an anti-dislocation here, right? Right, in order for, in order for this to happen, that this, this, this edge dislocation goes all the way to here, and then somehow disconnected from this guy, then there has to be an anti-dislocation to be created here, right? If you create an anti-dislocation here, well, that the only way you can do it because the system is large enough to say the system is large enough here. So if you have, okay, so this is, this said, I'll call this you one. See, one, one thing you could do, for example, suppose you were to introduce a dislocation and dislocation pair into this line of dislocations. Yes. Now, what exactly would that do? Okay, then let's do that. Let's do that. Okay. How about that? How about, I'm going to call this one positive. Okay. All right. So this is a positive and then positive. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now if I'm going to make it, let's say I induce here a dislocation pair here. Okay. Yeah, but it's a, it seems that they don't, it doesn't do very much. No, they it do, right? Because then, so this is a positive. Uh, this is a negative, this is a positive. Oh. Oh, I think I understand. Mike. Huh? Mike, if you think about it, let, 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 let's think about this, okay, for a second. If I have a chain of, I think this is just the electrostatics. Look, if mm -hmm. I have a positive charge, 
a line of positive charges for some reason it has to be on a chain here okay mm -hmm. let's say i have a, a hair that somehow gets charged up okay along here okay i mean a real piece of hair okay gets charged okay so then if i create it so th this is around it is the elastic media then i can create a pair of of charges okay all oh, right and then you could allow the negative charge to annihilate one of the positive charges and you end exactly. up with the same, right. uh, the, same right. the same green boundary but it's now got it's now wobbled yeah it's, it's the same way actually this is not trivial indeed this is interesting actually so th let's say i'm going to create a Okay, this, this, this go back to the same way as Anderson uh, Yuval did. Um, um, okay, so this create a small pair, okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, this create a small pair. So what does it do? So this guy will be attracted to him, right? Yeah. Will annihilate, right? Right? Yeah. So that's effectively moving this charge to here, isn't it? Yeah, I mean... So, so, so in fact, the movement of the ch charge, Mike, the no, movement I mean, I can, of charge can be understood as a creation of pairs, the same way. Well, yeah, it can be certainly understood that way, but the question is, is, is this a sensible way to think about it? Because uh, it might be. Mike, then the same argument applies. In other words, the cost of created dislocation pair goes as logarithm of the, uh, the distance. It's not related to the system size anymore, you see? Mm -hmm. So then you can have a, a lot of this stuff lying around. Sure. And then, then it will, so once you have that, so then it, it has the same effect, you see? So if you look at this pair, the bare interaction is a repulsive, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Having thermally excited pairs of dislocations and then allows this charge to move to here sure and then effectively reduce the, the coulomb interaction between them to begin with yes oh yeah 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 i mean so, yeah right because this is this is equivalent to the the the, the green boundary fluctuating around right? yes so so what what they are saying is um uh, yes, uh, uh, you can have a, um, in, in your original KT uh, HNY paper, where you have dislocation pairs at a large distance, right? Remember this large distance? Mm -hmm. They get screened by the little guys here in pairs, remember? Yeah. Okay, so the effective interaction between this at the infinite distance gets screened by by the pairs okay mm -hmm. so this what they are saying is the same argument applies remember that all the charges interact with the logarithmic interaction right so this guy and then this guy here interact logarithmically right mm -hmm. okay so this uh, and then if you allow the system to have a gas of those little guys here and the their logarithmic interaction also gets screened. Yeah. Uh, so I, I, I think they are right. I, I think the, uh, uh, the same argument applies. I'm, I'm just a little surprised that no one have thought of this uh, before. Why didn't I thought of it in, 20, in 1916? I did have a, a low angle green boundary in my lab in, 20, in 1996. Well, yeah. some, sometimes these things are, you know, the obvious things sitting there staring in the face are often difficult, not easy to 
to realize that it's actually quite important. Right. Mike, I think this, uh, they, they, they are right. I think there's a phase transition here. I think it's essentially the same phase transition the industry evolved. Yeah, but I mean, if you look at their Hamiltonian, it's rather like the Hamiltonian for a incommensurate transition, right? Yes. So this depinning transition may be uh, basically the, the commensurate incommensurate transition. Yes, but that that transition is not what they are that's that's none of their big story here. The big story is the melting. Yep. That happens at a higher temperature, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. It's the, this temperature here. Yeah. And what they are claiming is that there's a two-stage melting too. Okay, but I mean this is this is this is the same, very similar to a commensurate incommensurate transition, uh, where at low temperatures, you get the the, 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 the the system goes from a commensurate to incommensurate phase, but the incommensurate phase is like a floating solid. Yes. Right? And then yes. the incommensurate phase will melt. Yes. Due to dislocations in this incommensurate phase. Yes, yes. Right. Yes. And you can say that the, that the, um, the commensurate incommensurate transition is due to uh, that's the pinning. That's the floating transition. Yeah, that's the 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 pin to unpinning transition. Yes. Yes. Right. That's the uh, Pokorovsky Talapov transition. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. It's sort of like a commensurate, and that's an incommensurate incommensurate transition, if you like. Yes. Yeah. So it seems to be very similar to the commensurate incommensurate problem. Yeah. Except that this is. Um, uh, in one dimensions, there's a, a sure. this, is, this is exactly actually David Thales. It's, it's essentially a Thales, um, Anderson Yuval transition. It's a one dimensional melting. Yes. Okay. Uh, All right. So then this is very interesting because this is a very, and then I'm actually writing an NSF proposal and then this, uh, I want to put this in my proposal, in fact. Sure, why not? Because, yeah, because if we could do an, a nice experiment on this, that'd be great. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And then, uh, okay, that's fantastic. Okay. All right. So, uh, our time is up. And uh, Daniel, how about this? Um, Professor Koslos and I finished our tea time, our coffee time right now. I'll give you a few minutes to ask him any question you want to ask. Uh, I, I, oh, thank you so much. Um, okay, so how about this? I'm going to give you, hand you to be the host, okay? Uh, it's, uh, okay. As long as um, Professor Costas, I, I sent you a, a, a link. Um, if you're able to, to, to click that. Um, just... uh, okay. All right. Okay, so I'm going to end okay, this sure. meeting. Okay, right. Mike, Mike, Mike. I'm going to yes. end this meeting. Okay. And then you, why don't you respond to Daniel's email and then... Uh, there's a he doesn't, have to, he doesn't have to respond. He just has to click the link and then. Okay, just click his link. Okay. Yeah. And uh, uh, Mike, Mike, I'm gonna end this meeting now. Okay. Okay, Sean. No, okay. Job. You can keep. Uh, you can keep the video on if if you want. Oh yeah. No, no, no. I'm I'm ended. And I'm ended. I'll talk to you. I'll talk to you next week. Okay. Talk we to you next bye. week. Okay. 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 Bye. 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 Okay. Now what do I do?